Kamel Dillon is my guest. She survived and overcame years of abuse, torture, and fear in her marriage. Her book, Black and Blue Sorry, will resonate deeply with anyone who has experienced domestic abuse of any sort or anyone who hasn't. That's right. Because it's still puzzling, and it's puzzling to many people and smart people, why women return to hell, why they don't leave. That's right, and I returned several times mm -hmm. to him. I returned thinking, maybe, maybe there's hope. Maybe he'll change. And, and then the other thing is, where am I going to go? Right. Where would I go? Mm -hmm. Who's going to take? And he always took the children from me. So. And he had the power to do that with the, with the province, with the state, with right. and, and the he, rules? The rules. He had, and he was a working man. He had the money. Mm -hmm. I had nothing, and he would tell me, and he even caused me to, he forced suicide, me to commit suicide, and uh, where he forced Lysol down my throat, and so he phoned the police and said she's... She's mentally unstable. Yes. She's tried to commit suicide. That's I need to right. take care of the children. And Did the police buy it? No one bought it. Initially, initially they, you know, because I couldn't talk, he was doing the talking, and it was a few days later when my throat was, you know, healed. Mm -hmm. I could talk, and I told my story. And that's when he went to court and got uh, custody of the children. It, it doesn't sound true. It's not true. It's, you know, he manipulated the system, um, workers, mm -hmm. anyone, because he was so charming. Mm. Influential, uh, charming, exactly. rich. And here I was laying in bed, not saying anything. So people took my silence as, oh, she's guilty. Well, physically, you're small. You're yeah. five two, five yeah. three. He was. He was six over two, six. and you know, almost two hundred pounds, or even more. Um, I didn't speak. I, I could have spoken and I could have defended myself, but I knew at the end of the day I was going to go back to him. Mm. Then what? Did a, a small part of you? think, there's something I'm doing. I'm married at 18. There's something I'm doing that's causing this. I was always told that whatever he, whenever he got angry, it was my fault. So when you hear this day in, day out, you believe it. Mm -hmm. So I think, maybe I'm not good enough for him. Maybe I'm not pretty enough. Maybe, maybe, you know, all these maybes. And finally, I accepted that the, I had no more friends, I had no family around me, that everything was my fault. Did he isolate you mainly? Did you isolate yourself? No, he did. He did. It was the cutting off uh, my friends, then my family. And I had no one to talk to. And yet you had family. I had a lot of family. And he had family, and you had a, a brother. And you would think someone in, in your circle would come forward and, and do an intervention. That I hoped that. Mm -hmm. And even, even when I was silent, my silence was speaking out very loud. I would make eye contact and hope somebody saw my black eye or somebody saw the fear in my eyes and they would do something. Yes. But no one caught on. And I thought, my husband was right. No one wants you. No one's mm -hmm. going to believe you. Now uh, that you are the woman you are, does it shock even you that you bought into this in a, in a way? And I don't, I, I know you were terribly afraid and tortured and all of that, so it, it's hard to yeah. grip. I, you know, as I was writing those, that book, I thought, did I survive that? Did mm. I? Live? And it was actually making me very angry that I allowed it to happen, that I wasn't strong enough to leave. And I went through a lot of self-blame, but looking back, there was really nothing I could do. But yeah, I, it did make me really mm -hmm. angry at the things that he did. And were you angry at your parents, at his parents, at your friends for not coming in and helping you? I was angry with a lot of people. I was mm -hmm. angry with my community. I was angry with the employees that s witnessed it and walked away. And, and frustrated. Yeah. Uh, your husband, who is now gone, dead, had a, a welding shop, and he burned you, did he, and shaved your hair? Yes. He tried to electrocute me with an arc welder, and he shaved my head so that I, because I think he suspected, okay, she may just leave. 
So he shaved part of my head so I wouldn't go out. Mm. Um, you know, there's so much he did that's in the book which torture. I don't say abuse anymore, I say torture because, yes. you know, hunger, uh, starving me, pushing Tying me you up with nylons. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pushing me into uh, the ocean, hanging me with my sari, pouring kerosene over me and then giving me the matches to light. He tried to drown you? He tr many times. Okay. I I'm amazed you're here. Me too. When you counsel women today, what do you tell them? I tell them to get out. I mm -hmm. tell them that Easier said than done, as you know. Exactly. And I also, I tell them that you're not crazy, that this is not your fault, and that you are believable. Because a lot of times we're told, no one's going to believe you. Right. And it crosses all socioeconomic barriers. It, it doesn't does. matter if you're rich or you're poor. It, young or yeah. old, South Asian, Caucasian. Yeah. What culturally isn't understood in your community about this? The boys are still treated uh, very much, you know, higher than the girls. Because, you know, a lot of times we're, girls are looked at liability. Mm -hmm. you dowries. Know, dowries and, uh, and, you know, and if we choose to date or if our marriage fails, we're blamed. Mm. Whereas the boys, you know, they encourage you to go out and find another one. Right. So again, and also the culture says, um, don't expose too much. S particularly in my family, and I know this happens in a lot of uh, South Asian families, mm -hmm. is you don't leave because who's going to marry your younger siblings? Because ah. now that you've got this mm -hmm. tainted name, did your brother get that message in your family? You, you said you were raised in a healthy family. Did he get the message, I'm the man, I can power over a woman, it's okay for me to hit a woman? Did he get that message, do you think? My, uh, we, like I said, it was a healthy family, so my family did not really right. abuse each other. My sister-in-laws are really blessed to have my brothers. Um, and that's why I could not figure out where I went wrong. You know, if my other siblings are doing so well, there must be something wrong with yes, me. Yes, I get it. Uh, when did the love vanish in your marriage? Vanish. I tried to love him initially. Every time I tried to love him, he destroyed it. So I think it didn't take me very long to start hating him. Mm. Any moments of joy? Any? I can't remember. Mm. There were good moments, mm -hmm. but I, do, I think when the good moments came, I wondered why. I couldn't enjoy it because I thought, what's next? Sure. When, as you know so well, abusive yeah. men are very clever. That's right. In that they are remorseful, many, the next day, and they'll never do it again, and they're getting counseling, and they'll, they'll go see the police. They'll yeah. do whatever you want them to do because they feel terrible. Yeah. Did that happen in your case? No. no. Every time something happened, he would blame me. Even mm. when he was arrested, he blamed me. So I, I was always caught, like I was always blamed. Yes, and he was arrested yeah. because of abuse. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? It happened. Is that in the a, car incident? That's right, yeah. Tell in me the, about in it. In the parking lot. Mm. I had bought bread that was 10 cents more, but then he was always looking for excuse. Sure. So he started to beat me up, and he pulled my hair and threw me against the window and somebody, a ca actually a bunch of kids, teenagers, saw that and called the police who weren't very far. So when the police got there, I was bleeding, and he said to me in Punjabi, he said, don't tell them anything, otherwise I'll kill you. Mm -hmm. And so when the police officer who, for the first time, somebody actually believed me and came close to me, I told the truth. I said, this is what he did, and this is what he said. And so he was arrested. And in jail for two nights. And when he was in jail for two nights and you're at home in fear about his return, what happened when he returned? He returned with a no contact order and called my dad and said, we need to talk because I really love your daughter, care for her. And so dad allowed him to come to his house and he's telling dad how much I love your daughter and every time I want to make her better. She 
reacts differently. I, I believe she has a mental problem. And so when I suggest that, she calls the police. Yes, and at one point, he said you're hearing voices. Yes. I know. Yeah. Uh, how did you get away? I finally, when all this happened, when he took me to the ocean, he hung me, he poured kerosene, he raped me in front of my children, deliberately. Uh, they were away, and I thought, one of us is going to die, and I hope it's not me, and I hope I don't do it to him. So that's when I went to my father-in-law and said, I'm not staying. Send me and the children back. You're in India. I would, yeah, he had yes. taken me back by yes. this time. And he agreed that he had, you know, he was going to kill me. And so he did get me a ticket, but one, one-way ticket. He took the kids. And you got them back eventually. Eventually, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's heartbreaking. What happened to him? He was found uh, three years after I had escaped and came back, and now is with all my children. He was found dead around the same waters where he was trying to drown me. Suicide? No. No. Uh, the children. Tell me about the children. I know you have four children, yes. two girls, two boys, and two grandchildren. That's right. How have they overcome? It was counseling. It was a lot of self-talk. We, me and uh, the children, we grew up again. We began to love each other. We began to love ourselves. We began to talk about the abuse and accept that it happened, but how can we change it? And so it's taken us a lot, a lot mm -hmm. of years, but today I look back and I'm thinking, thank God, thank God I got them out when I did. Yes. Because today I, they are get with me. They're mm -hmm. helping me with this book, with my talk. And, and do you still sometimes in the dark of night relive this over and over? Not as much. Not as much. Yeah. And your solace is? I surround myself with healthy people. Mm -hmm. I've got really, really good friends who keep me on track. And um, I, I know now, I know better what I want in life and I, what I don't want in life. And you have a charity? Yes. So it is through City in Focus. Giving back, City Focus, That's right. great group. And I, yes, I give back to the community uh, at large. And I do a lot of talks where I do it as, as a volunteer, simply to educate, educate uh, students in high school that this is not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And is there something more a woman can say to get out? I mean, you, uh, uh, the neighbor says, just leave. Your girlfriend says, just leave, but you can't go. No. As you know, financial freedom is the first freedom, so you don't That's have right. the money That's right. and you don't have the courage, so what? I need information. I need people to come alongside of me. Don't just tell me to leave, because where do I go? Mm. Where Take would I go? Take me in. Yes. Help yes. me, you know, give me more information, because I don't want to leave and then find out my kids will be taken away. So I need more information. So that's why what I do is I educate the community. Yes. And, and, and bring them to, for a possible solution. It's important work you do. Congratulations. You. Uh, you have called yourself an overcomer, and you indeed are. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Kamel Dillon, her book is Black and Blue Sorry, a must read. And remember, you can catch our conversations on YouTube or reach us on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer. There will be many more insightful, compelling guests to come. Thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with us today.